Hey, it's Billy Go Lightly. Um, been a while since I did a, a video on anything and kind of got a new project I'm working on and this is going to be the kind of the little bit of the backstory on uh, a lot of it. So I've had these two pieces of round plate you see here. It's actually ends out of a like 10,000 gallon fuel tank. It's been kicking around the property for ever, 10, 15 years probably. And um, we cut the ends out. I always had the idea. I was like, man, this would make a really cool table. Um, it's eight feet around in diameter, and you see there's two of them there. There's one out of each end of the tank, and they're flat. They got nice rolled edges on them and stuff. And I, I don't know. I just kind of always thought it would make a really cool conference table. And um, since I have the real estate office and stuff now, and we got a bay area kind of finished off, we had like an extra thousand square feet beginning of 2019. Um, I kind of thought this would, you know, go good in there. It's an old gas station we've been remodeling and doing different stuff on, and it just, you know, kind of seemed like that would be a cool piece of uh, functional industrial furniture to, to go in there. So, um, anyways, I, it turned out once we had cubicles set up and stuff, I didn't have enough space to put in an eight foot round table so I kept looking at it looking I'm like well hell let's let's cut it in half right down the middle and I'll bolt it up against the wall and put a, a monitor on the wall and kind of basically make a workstation out of it and then as I was going through it I had some different ideas about drilling holes and putting countersunk um, electrical outlets to plug your phone and your laptop into and some different stuff so I'm going to kind of go over uh, a short journey of pictures. I actually built the table um, in March or April of 2019 and I'm starting on the second one now so this is going to kind of be a video to show you of from pictures and some commentary on uh, you know how I built the first one and then you'll see another video basically me starting the second one. The second one uh, was a lot worse off material wise than the first one so uh, this was my dad and the front loader basically we're dragging the plate around back to the front of the shop where we can uh, you know work on it um, you can see it laying up again you know it's, it's eight feet in diameter it's quarter inch uh, thick um, the edge is actually like double walled so that's like half inch thick around this outside edge um, let me just see it moving around okay so initially I laid this out with a piece of track from a traveling track burning torch and um, tried to basically you know use a torch and cut it and um, I wound up changing to a piece of flat bar that was like quarter by three or whatever it was you see this edge over here this this half here on the right is the one that I discarded and did not use uh, initially the table that I built and completed and is in the office now is this left half left half over here because um, it was better I didn't have all this flattened bent down area and stuff now the one I'm trying to build now was this piece and god it's just a pretzeled up cluster you know what um, I'm going to flip through there. I don't know what that was. We'll skip through that. Okay, there it is. It's cut in half. You see Dad back there in the background saying something. I'm not sure what. Um, these things here are, uh, I think, like you know, like on boats you have uh, um, anodes and stuff, you know, to basically collect uh, uh, rust and stuff like that. They were made on there. Really heavy things. They were just kind of on there. I went up cutting those off later on, but... You can see this after we got it cut in half. That's inside the office um, where the table eventually winds up at. That's a video of Dad moving and we don't need to watch it. Okay, so I've got the big 10-inch uh, grinder, angle grinder out here now, basically trying to grind out these edges and stuff. Here's the flat bar. This flat bar will eventually get welded along the edge here and bolt up against the wall, as you'll see as we're going through. See it has a little bit of a bend in it here, but not very much, very little. This other piece over here that I left and I'm trying to work with now is just it's it's bent all to pieces. So now I've got it set up on a on a, another table I have here, and I've basically been working my way with the grinder around the corners, trying to level it off, and I keep going around with a tape measure, and I'll basically measure this side and this side and this side and 
basically working my way around to try to make sure I have a, a universal thickness on the flange um, all the way around. This big grinder with a uh, flapper disc, man, it, it cuts and it leaves a nice finish too. Um, it, it, that's, that thing will remove some material, let me tell you. So I've got it clamped down here. You see I've got this edge here where I cut it in half originally cleaned up really nice. And I'm just still just working my way around the edge here. You can see i got a little bit of a low spot right there maybe. And some other areas. Alright, so now I've got it flattened out. You see these big pieces of plate here and the C-clamps. I've got it clamped down to the table I'm working on. The table I'm working on is only like 3 16 thick, so I'm probably bending it as much or more than the top table, but that's, that's, that's a story for another time. Um, here's the center uh, uh, chalk line I have here um, with my center mark here. And you can see some, some tacks across here where this a uh, piece of flat bar as well. That's the flange where it's basically going to bolt to the wall. And I've got a piece of angle in here, basically one to ensure that the flat bar stays square and doesn't turn in or out um, as it's being welded in. And it's also to try to see how much of a belly I have in the table. In this piece I didn't really have that much. Okay, so this piece of square tubing here was actually at my office. Um, again, because it's an old gas station, there was an old uh, fuel island canopy over there we cut down like, I don't know, six, eight months before this or whatever. And this was actually the top here, and your roof with your lights and all of that stuff was basically hooked to this end here. This end down here off screen was in concrete, and when we had the people tear it down I basically said hey I, you know whatever I want to keep the square tubing for a later project and didn't necessarily have this table deal in mind whenever I did it but it wound up working out pretty well for that um it's just another picture of the flange going down there you can see my half inch holes here this is where the bolts are going to actually go in the bolt and hold it um, to the wall uh, you can see my welds going down. So I think I just did in sections and stuff here, but you can see where I'm welding that on. This is a 7018 kind of artsy fartsy picture. Okay, so this is I've got the flange weld. I've basically got it sitting down on the floor for the very first time. See the little edges down here I have to clean up and stuff. That comes later on. So this is the first point where it really actually starts to look like a table. And again, you know, this is actually pretty flat and square and uniform and the one I'm working on now this piece over here is god awful in hindsight I probably shouldn't have even started with that and I should have cut apart the other half laying in the back but um, here's a piece of square tubing um, that's been cut um, as a pedestal you <laughs> see it's pretty rough cut with the saws all here before I can get it in the shop and put it in the, the Johnson bandsaw to clean it up and get a, a square top on it uh, Cutting a piece of angle iron for something there, not sure what. Um, oh, I forgot I had to do this. This this piece of square tubing had a bend in it, so um, it, I basically slipped a port of power jack in there and um, jacked it out to basically try to level it across the top so it didn't have any big bad bend in it. Here's the same piece now in the Johnson bandsaw in the shop where I'm squaring up the end of it to, uh, you know, basically fit on the top of the table better. Um, this was a cutout where actually water from the roof end up here basically collected in and ran down through this hole and then it ran down the inside of the square tubing to an exit point like on the concrete slab below. It was a really goofy like water trough rain collection downspout type thing. I'll really never understand what their thought process was. So here it is in the uh, the shop. I've got the table upside down. Um, the angles are basically cut and sitting here. I've got the foot pedestal basically sitting on there trying to get things squared up and, and centered up on on the table. You can see I got some scribe lines and different stuff to work off of. And this is where it really starts to look like a table, and, and, and you see kind of the massive size of it. Um, 
This fan back here is probably four foot and some change in diameter. Um, and this table's six foot long. And this thing is like basically crushing it <laughs> from the weight and the size of it. Um, so these are the same square uh, uh, angle irons I had sitting there. I've now basically turned it upside down. I have some scribe lines I've put through here to basically detail, you know, where the edge is at, where the center is at, and then these holes here are where I have to drill holes in all the way through to run bolts to basically pinch it together, as you'll see, so that you can take the center post on and off, because otherwise it's too big, it won't fit in through doors. Here I've got the magnetic drill press sitting on here, I've got my my whole center punch to where I'm going to be drilling through. So you see I've got it sat back up on the table now. I have the angles basically tack welded. I have my bolts running all the way through, bolting it to the top or to the underside of the bottom. Again there's an angle there you can see that pretty good. And this is fixing to come the first time I actually stand the thing up on the, the center. This was the first time after the, the pedestal had been welded on I actually stood it up and I looked at it and I'm like man it actually kind of looks like a table now. <laughs> um, you can see this is the this is the edge here that will be bolted up against the wall. There's a there's a set of bolts that goes in through each one of these holes to hold it to, to the wall. And I basically set the level on it and looked at it and it was that good on the bubble, like right off the bat. So I was very fortunate that I had a good, relatively flat, unwarped piece of, you know, material to begin with. Um, and that helped. That helped a lot. <laughs> um, this was trying to remove this, this coating and I don't know what that stuff is but it is gnarly like you can't grind it because it just loads up the grinder wheel this was me trying to wire wheel it and basically would throw it all out here but then it just like turned to liquid and you would just like move it around like it didn't even it never actually cut it and the only thing I found that I actually moved it was burning it off and then I tried to sandblast it and that didn't really work and I got frustrated and then I got like two gallons of uh, stripper from Lowe's and I had to just do it in layers like I would paint it on take the scraper, scrape it off, and just kept going and going and going until I basically got it off. It, this was, it was some nasty stuff trying to get that off of there. Um, this was a hole that had been cut in it originally to make it where it was easier to lift up and move around and dad cut a little piece of plate and put in there and I wound up welding that up so the hole was in there. This is now after it's basically been stripped and I've scraped the whole thing. You see this <laughs> little bowl here is literally full of all the paint uh, coating stuff that has been stripped off of it. Um, I've got the mag drill here and I'm cutting some holes to basically put in my countersunk um, electrical plugs and outlets. Um, you'll see here after a little bit spacing them out you can see it there. And I also put a, a middle one in here to run cords um, from the TV mount on the wall down through the table to a plug underneath you'll see later on. There's there's one of the countersunk um, outlets there. Pretty cool. This is the middle one here for the cords from the television, your power, and your HDMI to run down through to the PC. There's the old man there keeping an eye on things. Um, okay, so this is whenever we were starting to sand the top of it, and um, it just, it was really slow going, um, wasn't really getting the kind of finish I wanted, so I wound up getting the thing sandblasted, as you'll see in a couple pictures here. Um, <laughs> this, is, this was my attempt to sandblast it myself, which was a friggin' nightmare. So, okay, so this is picking it up after I took it to an industrial place in town and they sandblasted it for me. Charged me like 125 bucks, 130 dollars, which wasn't cheap, but it was worth doing in my opinion. Um, so these are the pieces, both of them, as I'm getting ready to go home with it. This is the first initial clear coat. 
um, from the underside. So I decided I wasn't going to paint it. I wanted to clear coat it, and I just went to Napa and just bought automotive clear coat and activator and um, I sprayed the bottom side first the finish wasn't as important there but I wanted to get it sealed before it flash rusted the humidity here in Florida is so bad like stuff will flash rust like friggin crazy in a matter of two hours if you don't get something on it and damn sure better not put your bare fingertips um, on or the oils and stuff it just does a horrendous job on bare metal you'll see your actual fingerprints on it <laughs> Um, so there's a good underside picture and you can see the thickness of the flange, like I said before, is half inch all the way around. That's the clear coat. Okay, so now we've got it flipped over and I wound up doing two coats of clear coat on the top and around the edge of it. I think this is the first one was a drying and I was really amazed like how fast this stuff dried. And I just sprayed it on like with this old DeVilbus uh, regular suction type uh, paint gun. It wasn't anything fancy, gravity fed. You can buy a paint gun like this thing off eBay for probably thirty or forty dollars. I mean, it works good. That's one Dad's had for a hundred years, literally. I mean, it gets the job done. But you don't need anything special to do this kind of stuff. So um, we sanded some portions of this after it came back from the sandblaster, but it kept a lot of texture and just kind of uniqueness to it which I thought was cool here's clear coat and activator and stuff sitting back there you'll see that's kind of a close-up of the finish and again you can see you know some of the sanding lines and the grain and stuff in it, um, it it's got a really nice finish I think you know for something that's steel and kind of industrial and not supposed to be perfect um, this was a spot over here we'd welded the square in to, to fill in that hole that was there this back here was some grinder lines initially um, I was thinking I was going to use that, but it was just making too rough of a finish. And then uh, we wound up doing like a, just, I think it was like 60 grit sandpaper back and forth on a sand and block and stuff like this. All these little brown spots were actually like pieces of area where it was flash rusting already. And I mean, I literally sprayed the clear coat on it within hours of getting it back. And that's just, that's how it works here. <laughs> uh, just flipping through a couple more pictures. That was a good one to show the gloss. I mean, these are clouds, you know, reflecting from outside um, on it. I mean, it, it had a really good finish, I thought. Uh, that's a video of Dad grind or uh, sand and all. This was this was actually before we clear coated it. Um, that was after the clear coat had dried overnight, and I think this was after my last application of it. Um, I had just went in the shop like the next morning and had an opener just to look at it and see how it looked. You can see, you know, it's got some rough places and there's a couple places where I had some clear coat, thinner and whatever, but I mean it really overall turned out pretty friggin' good, I thought. Um, another picture, you see the pedestal and stuff here. This is a good picture, kind of shows the gloss and stuff on it. Just a couple more. Okay. So there's the center pedestal out in the sun. This is actually the day I'm getting ready to move it into the office. Got some lifting straps through the eyes to move it. You can see the gloss on it again. And Dad's basically got the straps and I got a chain through it. He's fixing to put it over on a trailer. Got it sat on the trailer. I got blankets and stuff on it because I was worried about <laughs> chipping the finish. Which that clear coat was actually pretty resilient. I was I was surprised and impressed by that. So here's after we got it drug into the office, and um, I've got the center pedestal bolted down on it. We got it up into place. Got the holes drilled in. Got it mounted on the wall. And you can see. If it let me zoom in enough. I actually bought a little rubber stripping that's on edges to go around the bottom. I mean, that really just set it off because I want to make sure there wasn't any rough edges or anything to like catch your pants on and tear them or your leg or anything like that. And um, I had the edge like rounded and sanded off good, but it's still like that. That really set it off and made it look good. I think and the stuff was cheap. I think I bought it from Amazon and it was like a 25 foot roll of it or something. Um, so I got the wall mount TV there, got my outlets, 
Um, I've since, I don't think I have pictures of it even, I've got like some little vertical cord cover stuff, um, tidy the cords up a little bit. You know, this is the concept, you know, put it against the wall, you got a TV there, you can plug your laptop in with an HDMI cord, work off of it, you got people there working next to you, or it's shared workspace or whatever. And, um, you know, that was pretty much the, the concept of it, so... There's an example. I think that was the first day I had I had the laptop hooked up and I was having me some Chinese food over there. So um, that's basically, you know, the the construction of the first table. And um, in a future video I'll be doing here, you'll see me kind of struggling through making the second one, mainly because the material was way more out of shape and bent and twisted and warped. And it's just been like a constant struggle the whole way, like welding pieces on it and run and pour the power through it to bend it back and whatever but um hope you enjoyed this i like making stuff like this and repurposing things and um kind of fits the motif of the uh office being a uh, kind of an industrial type of workspace i call it and um it's been fun to have things hooked up and do this with so um anyways hope you enjoyed it stay tuned for another video